Hello everyone, and welcome to another episode of our Hackerlead tutorial. In this episode, I'll be talking to you about um, how you can use the Excel template as a mechanism to export and import data in and out of your data model. Excel obviously is a really powerful tool and you definitely can do many, many different things with it. And um, you know, we would like to explain to you how that works in the context of the Hackerlate Studio. Right, so it allows you to basically exchange data between an Excel file, right, uh, a pre-formatted specific template of an Excel file, um, and the Hackerlate Studio data models. Right, so this allows you to basically export your data model into Excel, do a bunch of easy editing of popular properties um, in the Excel format, in the tabular format of Excel, and then save that Excel file and re-import that back into your Hackerlate Studio data model. Right, so the great thing about that is that um, while you obviously lose some functionality and you're not looking at the data model in the way that you can uh, do this in the Accolade Studio, it does allow for some types of interactions and actions that are more productively done in Excel, like bulk updates or maintenance of properties or editing of colors or those types of things, you know, things that you would require be required to do a lot of different clicks inside the Hackerlate Studio or edits in the Hackerlate Studio, well, they can very, very easily be done in Excel. So you can create a model in Excel, right, and add containers, ed entities, attributes, uh, or whatever, or you can edit an existing model, right? You can work from an existing model, right, which we'll demonstrate to you a little bit later on. Then you can basically uh, select all the properties and, you know, uh, do whatever you need to do there, um, add custom attributes if necessary, and do basically uh, these large updates to your data model really, really easily in the Excel file, right? There are some limitations, right? These are very important. Uh, references, references to definitions are not resolved, right? And you need to take care about the version of the template that you're using, as they must be the same as the target and the plugin version of the export process. Okay, so the way to get going with this is you go into the um, tools menu of your uh, Hackerlate Studio, right? So you have a model open already, and you basically say, well, I want to go tools forward engineer this particular model to an Excel file, and it will pop up a dialog that will ask you to select the objects that you want to have exported into Excel, right? You may want to reduce the list of objects that you want to have exported, right? And you can influence that over here. Also, you can select which object properties you want to have exported inside the Excel file, right? Maybe you don't need all of them, maybe you're only manipulating some of them inside uh, Excel, so you can use this dialog to reduce the number of columns that you want to have exported because you don't need them uh, inside the Excel file. And then uh, finally, I'd like to mention that you can also maintain these options, these export options, um, in the general forward engineering options of your Hackerlate Studio, right? So if you go into the gen general options pane, you will also find that there's a forward engineering piece there and there you can basically say well for every target for every application target I want to have these types of options that I'm going to share with my colleagues right so you can export these options or import these options from someone else's configuration really really easily that means that you can basically do the same thing in the other direction right when I go reverse engineering right tools reverse engineer Excel template then you know it's going to uh, use those same options to import the information into your data model. We always assume that you have first done the forward engineering from your existing model. Even if you're creating a new model, then you forward engineer an empty model first. And then you edit that in Excel and re-import it back. You really need to take care about the titles and the order of the columns inside your Excel file because this is a template. This should not be altered, right? And what you should also really uh, uh, clearly understand is that Excel is not as rich or as powerful as the Hackerlate Studio client. It has some significant limitations, like, for example, the fact that we cannot enforce referential integrity between the worksheets. Right? So if you add something in one worksheet, then the other worksheet doesn't necessarily know about it. You really need to um, make sure that this is uh, uh, kept in mind. Then also, if you're working with um, CSV files, right, when you're, uh, for example, importing a CSV file into the Hackerlate Studio, then you first can uh, implement, them, uh, implement this and import this by doing, using the Excel template as an intermediary. So there are some very specific ways of doing this, and there's an expected behavior, right, which is all centered around how we can match or update or insert the different data elements based on their um, UIDs, based on their uh, unique identifiers. 
right? So um, if we, we find those UIDs and it's really easy, right? We match them and we can work with those. Um, if they're not there, then we will create or insert those properties or those attributes uh, in your data model. A really interesting feature of, of the Excel template is the fact that it supports dot notation, which means that you can also include complex structures, complex data types inside the tabular format of Excel uh, because, you know, the dot notation will tell it, you know, how um, the different parts of a particular element are uh, hierarchically structured. We support lots of different data types there as well, so um, really, really powerful. Um, and we should also stress that the import process, the reverse engineering process from an Excel file to a Hackolate data model has some very significant validations included. Right. You can list them here and, you know, please experiment with them as well. Um, but our assumption is that any import, any reverse engineering that you do from an Excel file should never corrupt your model, right? It sh should always lead to a sound result. And we highly recommend that you test this beforehand uh, and make sure that you always have backups or versions, uh, version controls uh, set up so that you can um, always go back if necessary. Right, so the Excel import-export uh, capability is really best suited for bulk editing of existing models, right? It's not intended for creating new models, right? Uh, because, you know, when you create a new model, there's lots of logic involved and this logic is not present inside that template. And, you know, when you do that, when you do these bulk updates, please also realize that, you know, there are some limitations, right? And that you probably want to start small, validate the approach, and then iterate over that and you know, gradually and progressively try more elaborate scenarios. So with that, I'm going to switch to the Hackolate Studio and show you how to use this. So here we go. We have our MongoDB model here, which I have used in a number of occasions over here, right, with the movies and the comments and all of those different um, uh, capabilities, reverse engineered from a sample data set on MongoDB Atlas. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to forward engineer this into an Excel file, right? So I have my options over here that I can select, you know, what do, needs to be included. I'm just going to grab everything now, uh, submit that, and then it's going to ask me, okay, where do you want to store this Excel file? Well, I'm going to replace an older version of the Excel file that I already had. And then I'm going to show you what the result is, right? It's right here now. Uh, so uh, let's uh, open this up a little bit, right? So in this Excel file, uh, which was generated from my data model, I have some guidelines, I have application info, right? I have the model info, database info, all of the things that, you know, are in my model here, right? So sample inflix, that's right, what I see over here. That's the name of the database, right? And then um, if I go into the collections, right? So I have the list of collections here, commons, movies, sessions, theaters, and users. I have all the fields, right? All the list of fields that are over here belonging to a particular entity with all of their characteristics, right? Not all of them are filled in, obviously, but it's quite a long list of uh, potential things that I can change here. And I have a number of other option, optional worksheets here that I can run through. Now, what I'd like to do is I'd like to show you how you can do two things really, really easily, right? So first thing I'm going to do is um, for my collections, I'm going to modify the color of these um, these uh, entities, right? So the color is over here right now. Let me just uh, uh, grab a different color that I have over here, right? And that is going to be an orange-like color. You will see it in a, in a couple of minutes, right? So let's save that, right? So we, by doing this, by editing this in the collection tab, all of the collections that I have inside my data model later on are going to show up differently. They're going to have a different color obviously. But I'd like to do something additional, right? So uh, a little bit more uh, on the content side of things, right? So I have a name and I have an entity name, right? For all of my uh, attributes. Why don't I use an Excel formula, which is going to say, well, this is a field named, and then I'm going to ref refer to this, right? Um, and then continue for entity called, and then say this, right? So this is what would be added automatically to my description field. So I'm going to uh, 
copy that over there, right? So you see how that works. Using formulas, I have automatically updated all of these descriptions. I'm going to save this now, and the Excel file has now been updated. And I'm going to go back here to my model and see if I can easily re-import that, right? So how do I do that? I go into my reverse engineering and say, I want to reverse engineer from an Excel template that I've just saved over here, right? And it's going to warn me, it's going to say, well, hey, you know, if you already have values in your open model, we will be overwriting them, right? So do you really want to proceed, right? And then it's going to do all kinds of validations. Remember, we don't want to be corrupting any files, right? And then it will say successfully imported, even giving you a log file of what exactly has happened, right? So now I go back to my model. Hey, look at this. The color has changed, right? Uh, I've updated these in bulk rather than having to go into every entity here and then, you know, ha uh, choosing the options here and all that type of stuff, right? I just do this in bulk in my, in my Excel uh, template. And then over here, if I go and I look at the description, look at that. This has automatically been updated as well, right? So reverse engineering from that Excel file has performed a significant large update to my data model without really having to do too much work. By using some of the automation capabilities in Excel, we can actually do this um, uh, and, and, and have this happen inside our Hackalade model as well. Right? There's obviously so many more powerful things that you can do now, right? Because inside Excel, you can do scripting, you can do database connectivity, you, know, you can do whatever it is that you want to do inside Excel and use the template to um, bring that back into your data models. So with that, I'm going to wrap up this um, tutorial and hopefully this was a useful one for you and you will see that there's a ton of additional reading material as always and I look forward to um, hearing your feedback. In any case, I wish you a wonderful rest of your day.